Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. My name is Munchables and I'm going to be running you guys through how to win in Vainglory solo queue. Now this is the second episode in this series and the first time we were talking about mentality. How you can think and how you can perceive the game better to make yourself better at the game and to help you progress. And now this time we're going to talk more about the nitty gritty, the in-game stuff. What you can actually do inside each and every game to make sure that you're netting those victories and i've broken it down into five easy steps on how to improve your own gameplay now those steps are farming map awareness win conditions itemization and simply don't throw now we're going to go through each of these points piece by piece so i can explain to you what i mean by each of those headers we're going to start off by talking about how important farming is in vain glory now farming in my opinion is more important than getting kills and actually more valuable than getting kills now before you get your pitchforks raised let me explain what i mean obviously a kill individually is more valuable than one cs but when you look at a whole minion wave you've got three small minions Winions, <laughs> they can be sometimes. You've got three small minions and one large minion. The total wave is worth 200 gold, plus that is shared with other players in your team. Now a kill, by default, this is assuming they have no kills and no deaths, is worth 300 gold. Which means all you have to do is one and a half minion waves. That equals a kill. So if you are around six or seven CS ahead of your opponent and you're laning, even if they have a kill, you're probably about even in gold. So always keep that in mind when playing Vainglory, that CS is incredibly important, and it doesn't necessarily matter if the enemy is mechanically better or whatever. Once you get to the mid game, so long as you've kept decent CS numbers, if you're 20 CS ahead, you can have a substantial lead on them, but you can always check what your lead is like by looking how many T3 items you have in your inventory versus theirs. Now, in the jungle, it's slightly different, and I'm gonna break this down a little bit for you. You can see the numbers on the screen. These are the respawn timers for the jungle camps. Obviously, farming is incredibly important in jungle, and it's very easy to be super aggressive and just push into the enemy lane, push into the enemy jungle, and you can sometimes end up dying and things. But it's always key to remember when your jungle camps are gonna come up, so you can recall, buy some items, and go and clear your jungle once again, so nobody can steal that away from you and then go and invade once more. The respawn timers are on the screen right now, but it's it's quite difficult to track them because they change across the game. But keep in your head around 50 seconds to about 110, unless you're in the super late game. That's generally when they're gonna be spawning for you guys. So if you can keep that in your mind, look at the time when you kill a jungle camp, you can come back 50 seconds to a minute later and it will be respawning. And that can be the difference between farming efficiently and taking a lead and maybe messing around in the lane too long and actually falling behind in gold. Now the second topic is going to be map awareness. Now obviously this is super important in all MOBAs, this is not a new concept, this is something that goes back, in fact not even just MOBAs, RTSs, StarCraft uses map awareness, everything uses map awareness if it has a mini map. What this concept means is knowing what is going on on the map. If you keep on glancing at your map every few seconds, you'll know where your lane is, you'll know where your captain is, you'll know where your jungle is. And if you have good vision, you'll know where the enemies are as well. And it's very important, especially when you're focusing on farming as fast as possible, it's important to know what else is going on on the map so you can react to that correctly. If their jungler is going to lane, even if you haven't finished your full rotation, you should probably head up to lane as well if you're in the jungle and make sure that that's going to be an even fight and your laner doesn't fall too far behind. That's just a simple example, but map awareness is absolutely key. Try and get yourself into the habit of checking your map once every 10 seconds. Just count to 10 in your head over and over again if you have to during your game and just have a little glance at your minimap while you're playing. If you can get into that habit, you'll know what's going on in the game so much better and it will improve you as a player because you'll know how to react to those situations. Now the third point is win conditions. This one is a little bit trickier. You have to have some decent knowledge of the game and I'm hoping to go into some of this more in depth, hopefully with the help of Excoundrel later on in the next couple of weeks. But one of the things that you wanna be looking at is what does your team do and what does their team do? And how, how does that interact? So let's say you're playing a game and you've got something like a Samuel, a Vox and a Lyra. 
Now this is what you would consider a siege composition. So your goal is to try and siege turrets, try and push the lane and, and get turrets because you have a lot of sustain. But your, all, your goal is also to kite away during team fights. Whereas opposite kind of compositions would be things like your alpha, things like Grumpjaw, things like all of the attacker as well, one of the super high priority picks right now. They want to go in, they want to force a fight. And these those are kind of two opposite win conditions. So the goal is to try and figure out what does your team need to do to actually win a game and how do you achieve that? And what does your opponent want to do to shut that down and how do you stop that from happening? So if you're Samuel Lyra and Vox, the goal is that you're constantly in combat but always backing away, always keeping the enemy at arm's length, making sure you're using the Portland Bulwark for Lyra, making sure that Samuel is building up his stacks on his Dragon's Eye and the same for Vox with the Breaking Point and making those fights last as long as possible because with a Lyra, you have a lot of sustain to back you up so you can make sure that those long fights do end up going your way. And obviously with a hard engage composition, something like Lance with Alpha and Vox also fits that one, the goal is obviously to start a fight and finish it as fast as possible. So two very different styles there. And you've got to figure out what style your composition has. Now the fourth point, I realize I'm sort of rattling on a bit here. I'm trying to get through these ones. Fourth point is itemization. Now this is similar to the win conditions, but kind of an advanced version. So let's say you're against something like a saw or a Ringo. When you're playing something that is going to be jumping on, like an Alpha or a Rona or Attacker, something that's going to be diving the backline, or a captain that has free roam of where they want to position in a fight, in that situation against a carry that wants to have really high attack speed, building something like Atlas Pauldrons is going to be better so long as you use the active on that carry than something like a Metal Jacket. So that's a simple itemization choice that could actually win you a team fight individually. But then on the other side of things, if you're against something like a Rona that doesn't really rely on auto attacks all too much, maybe something like a Metal Jacket actually could be better if they're just using their Red Mist during those fights because it'll protect you from the brunt of the damage. So simple choices like that often make a big difference in a game. And even if you're heading towards your Broken Myth, for example, Making sure to buy that early pierce instead of just more crystal damage often can be the difference in a team fight. That extra pierce can make a huge dent if everyone on the enemy team is already good, already has an Aegis under their belt. Now the final point, and this is the easiest one, but the e also the easiest one to screw up, is do not throw the game. I know it's easy to throw the game. It's easy to face check that brush. It's easy to go, oh, I think they're doing Kraken. I should go check, but your teammate is up in lane. You die 1v3, you lose the game. If they were doing Kraken, they get Kraken for free now. If they weren't doing Kraken, they get a kill and now they get Kraken. So it's kind of a lose-lose situation. So the trick is make sure to stick with your team. Make sure to communicate with your team what you are going to be doing. Use those pings, not in a toxic way, but use them to communicate that you want to go and check this bush. Make sure to tell them, stay together and then ping a bush, and then you can move in as a unit if you're in a position where you can team fight. Just always bear in mind that after 15 minutes in the game, once Kraken is on the map, Vainglory can go either way. It's very easy to throw a game of Vainglory, so never count your chickens before they hatch. And also, once you're getting onto those team fights for Kraken, buy an infusion, say a life. Save a life. I messed up the line, but infusions are so important in Vainglory. Make sure to get one under your belt once you get in towards those late game team fights. Once you're sort of past level 10 and you know you're going to be team fighting, an infusion is 100% worth the gold investment. So, those are the five points. I'm just going to recap those quickly. So, farming, make sure you're getting as much CS as possible. Focus on that overkills if you have to, if it means that it's going to get you more gold. Map awareness, keep your eyes on the minimap and you'll have much better idea of what's going on on the map. Make sure you know what your win conditions are, what is your team trying to achieve, How? what is your best path to victory. Itemization, make sure that you're reading the situation, understanding, okay, are they doing CP damage? Then I need to build shielding, that kind of thing. Make sure that you're always cognizant of what items you're building. And then finally, don't throw. Don't go for 50-50 Krakens. Don't do silly things. Buy infusions in the late game and you'll have an instant amount of success. Just think about what you're doing. Just think to yourself, before you do anything in the game, would a stupid person do this? And if the answer is yes, don't do it. 
That's going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can see on the screen my previous video is going to be there, and I'm going to be trying to link all of the videos together for you guys. Make sure to subscribe and drop a like as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.